Hello, my name is Emmanuel Cano. If you're listening to this, um, I hope it's going to help you a lot. I feel that God has called me to preach and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I want to do a new thing. Usually I post gaming videos and things like that, but the real Manny is a Christian. And I've been walking with Christ for quite some years now. Um, I've been involved in ministries and outreaches and nothing crazy, nothing too much. But um, always on my heart is, is, has just been to share the message of Jesus Christ. The message that so dramatically changed my life um, from inside out and changed my, my personality, my character, my struggles to who I am and what I do today. Um, and so, like I said, I'm doing something new and I always felt like on my heart as a Christian was to share the message of Jesus Christ, the stories, the parables, the teachings, and everything that has impacted me throughout my years. I would like to put it on a video for anyone out there listening and anyone who comes across these, uh, recordings. Um, anyways, Hopefully these videos aren't too long and I pray and hope that they will impact you in a great and wonderful way. And um, maybe you can just relate. And sometimes all people need is someone to relate to, to know that they're not alone and that God is with them and for them. And if God is with you, then who could be against you? Um, other than that, <laughs> I will... Uh, some of the stuff that I say, it, I kind of just not go off the top of my head, but it's been accumulated amount of information that I've received over the years. I've walked with Christ and the books that I've studied, the messages that I've heard and the pastors that I've sat under. And uh, I kind of want to put it together. Some of the stuff will be more in line and point by point. But um, when I feel something just on my heart, I would like to just put it on a recording and let it just go out there, you know, and be heard. Um, so like I said, I pray that this will help you and benefit you and in a mighty way. Um, so cool. So I would like to, to start off with the parable of the prodigal son, the prodigal son. And if you haven't heard this parable, it's just a very heartwarming, touching, a touching, um, story about a father and two sons. And, I can read through the whole thing. It's it's kind of a long story, but um, I can kind of give you the gist of it right now. Well, there was a father and two sons, and the dad was probably getting towards old age, obviously, and the two boys had grown up, and the younger brother uh, was asking his father for his inheritance, and the older brother was just being the older brother a good son. And, well, the old, the younger brother wanted to get the father's inheritance and do what he pleased with it and unfortunately the 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 father gave it to him um as a good father would if wouldn't withhold a blessing from their children right a good dad always wants to give something good to their children um a good father just always loves to bless his 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 kids um in any way as possible and well the younger brother um, blew all the money in, in easy terms, um, just wasted all the money on just immoral things. And, and also just in a far land, he was in a foreign land. He left, he got on a horse and <laughs> just took off far away. And well, um, he ran into some trouble at the end of it. And as he was in trouble after wasting this large amount of money on just nothing, just a, a, a good time, a pleasurable time. Um, he, he brought him to the point of where he was working, um, I guess, as a farmer or something like that, a rancher. And he was feeding the pigs and he was so hungry. He got to the point where he was thinking of eating the pig slop. That was in the bucket and if you don't know what that is it's pretty much like old food all mixed in together um and he was that hungry he thought of eating it and at that point he thought what am i doing i can go back to my father's house and ask him look at i don't have to be your son but can you at least pay me a servant and pay me the wages of a servant because he wasn't making much money in the foreign land 
and he thought that he was he could do that and so he did he gathered up all his stuff and he he took off back to his father's house and as he did this um as he was coming to the house the father was outside waiting for him um and from a distance the father could see the son and i will read i'll read you the scripture right here it's luke chapter 15 verse 18 um i will this is the son speaking i will rise and go to my father and i will say to him father i have sinned against heaven and before you and i am no longer worthy to be called your son treat me as one of your hired servants and he arose and came to his father but while he was still a long way off his him from his father the father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him and the son said to him father i have sinned against heaven and before you and i am no longer worthy to be called your son but the father said to his servant his servants bring quickly the best robe and put it on him and put the ring of his hand uh, the, put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring the fattened calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate for this my son was dead and is alive again he was lost and now is found <clears throat> so there's a lot there um, there's tons of like references there's tons of not hidden messages but like just references like the fattened calf you know jesus dying the calf being slain it's like that was a symbolic image of jesus dying on the cross making us uh sons and daughters of, of god you know our heavenly father um you know that ring it's like bearing the mark of 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 god um the image that he's put on us you know uh the robe is like when we're washed of our sins uh the Lord Jesus Christ would robe us with a, with a white linen, uh, saying that we're clean and that we belong to him. Um, and so there's a lot of references there. Now, I really don't want to get into too much of that. There's actually one like like topic or subject or just insight to, to, to see. Um, but let's back up a little bit. So we got to think about the culture, uh, this culture in this time, because fathers um unfortunately to say fathers nowadays aren't like we're not like this father um fathers aren't really fathers nowadays unfortunately um but some are some there's some really good dads out there and if you had a good dad growing up let me tell you something that is a huge blessing that's just wonderful and you know what you had and you cherished it right and it's a it's an awesome thing to have as a good dad uh, very rare um, not just a father but a good father and not just a dad but a good dad um, and well <clears throat> this dad was a good dad right um, he loved his son so much that he was literally waiting outside for him every single day um, waiting for his return and so the culture in that time especially was if a son disrespected the father um, that was a big no. There was there was no forgiveness. There was kicking out of houses. You know, the son was not allowed to come back. There was it was disrespect. You did not disrespect your father at all. Nowadays in this culture, disrespecting parents is the norm. Um, it happens, you know. And even back then, it did too. But there was tremendous um, consequences for it. But if a son did that to a father, asking for his inheritance and taking off and spoiling it and coming back to the dad there was no way back then a child would do that um would go back to the father asking for forgiveness and asking him you know to be a servant <clears throat> on top of that what do you think that conversation went like the son asking the dad hey dad can i have my inheritance let's be honest that's not how it went I know the Bible can kind of like the term, the terminology and the and the the sentences that were given there. It made it sound like it was like a clean conversation. Honestly, it it most likely wasn't a clean conversation. I'm not trying to draw speculation, but when you're asking your father for inheritance, the inheritance was only supposed to be given after the um, the inheritor um, 
was had gone and passed away um so the dad was very much alive so in other words he was saying you know drop dead old man give me my stuff like i just want i don't care about what you as a father is giving me but so much like just give me the money that's all i need give me the cattle give me the money give me the rights to this land so on and so forth and on top of that this is one thing that when I was reading through this book called Being Being Dad, um, this made the whole conversation and the whole situation even more slightly cringy. It was just cringeworthy. And it was the fact that the inheritance, <laughs> the inheritance wasn't supposed to go at all to the younger son. But the inheritance, if the father passed away, in this culture, the inheritance always went to the older sibling. It went to the older brother. And so as you can see there, the older brother most likely in the conversation, as the little brother's asking for an inheritance, the older brother's like, dude, it doesn't even belong to you. If my dad, if our dad passes away at any moment, the inheritance is supposed to come to me. But yet here is the, what is that word? Um, it's when like a, someone just like feels like they're deserving of it and you got that kid right there just asking the dad for an inheritance without any thought of hey this thing doesn't even belong to me it actually belongs still to my father I shouldn't be asking for it I should be mourning if my dad passes away and then it doesn't it's not even supposed to go to me it's supposed to go to my older brother and so you can just see the kind of conflict that that could be. Um, <laughs> and then on top of that, the way fathers are and back then are supposed to react to that. If a child is disrespecting a father, that's tremendous consequences. That's disownership. It, they will tell the son to just leave without anything. Um, but the sweetest part of the moment is when the son's running back. And this good father sees him and runs to him. The father could have stood there in his house and waited for the son to come back with an apology and gifts and asking for mercy and asking for forgiveness. But the father ran to the son the father ran to the son because the father very much understood who his son was to him. He loved him. Good dads love their children. And regardless of what mistakes are made, a good father runs to their children, forgives their children, and embraces their children. Now, I'm gonna just kind of go over this right now, like, so I don't miss it later, but like, if you're a parent, you know, don't ever withhold forgiveness to your child, right? Um, don't ever withhold it from your child, especially if your child is asking for forgiveness, right? Because the child has already understood the wrong that he or she has done. And it's just like repentance. Like, it's just like turning to God, like, you may have fallen into sin or you feel so far from God and you're calling God closer. Well, he's not. God is a good father. This is the term that Jesus tells us to call him. the heavenly, Our heavenly father, a good father. Jesus is known as the good shepherd. Um, he's not withholding that forgiveness because in repentance, we've come to the knowledge of us falling and we're turning to God, repenting with the, with the earnest heart, saying, God, forgive me, teach me. Show me, give me strength, give me the moral strength to overcome this. Help me heal from this and move move away from this. Well, God's not going to withhold his forgiveness from you because he already sees 
He sees your heart. He sees your intentions. He's going to forgive you. He's not going to hold anything against you. So if a child is asking for forgiveness, but doesn't really, or like doesn't even ask for forgiveness and you as a parent just go up to them and just say, I forgive you, you know, and the, the, the child isn't asking for it. Like the child hasn't really learned the lesson. They think now that they could probably get away with anything. If my, my dad's just going to love me through all my mistakes, you know, like which a parent will, but the parent isn't um, approving of those mistakes, you know. So if you're always just coddling your child, coddling your child, like moms will always coddle, coddle, coddle their child. But a father, you know, does a little bit different role. If he sees the child re- turning away and is regretful of their actions, then the father will forgive. And that grace and love that comes from a father is a lot different from the love of a mother. Um, it gives a, more of like a character development to that child, a, a a, a, a feeling of mercy from a point of authority has a lot more meaning than, than just simply being forgiven regardless of your regret of it. Um, it's a lot more impactful. And though that, that type of love is usually seen from a father because fathers are strict, you know, they're, they're the head of the house. They have this set of authority. They're, they're, there's a tone to them, a character that, to them, uh, a requirement and, and a way to them that is, can be demanding. It sounds bad, but we need those type of men in the world. Anyways, this is the part where I was going to get to. And it's more so of the sun. The son said in the foreign land that he would go back home and ask his father if he could at least be a servant. And that's what sucks. Because out of all the years of him living under the household of his father, he really didn't get what it meant to be a son. He didn't get that. He didn't get it. Because if the son got it, he understood that he can come back to the father and not ask to be a servant, but to ask just for the forgiveness and grace from the father and ask could I still be your son? And the father would say yes. That's the tough thing. And a more painful part, that son learned about the grace of the father because the the father threw a party for him. The, The father killed the fattened calf for him. The father gave him the beautiful robe and the father put the ring on his finger, right? Of the son who messed up, but came back and asked to be a servant. But the father said, no, you're not gonna be a servant. You're gonna be my son. You're still gonna sit with me. You're not gonna serve me. You're gonna enjoy my presence. You're gonna enjoy my fathership and we're gonna have a fathership and sonship here and it's gonna be great. Because I'm not calling you to be a servant. I'm calling you to be a son. And then you had the older brother, the son who did it all. Now, this is the sad part of it. So the, the younger son learned about the grace and love of a father. But the older son, he saw, he didn't see the father so well also. See, unfortunately... Later on in the story, the son, the older son gets mad at the father for throwing a party for his younger brother when he said that the younger brother needed punishment. He shouldn't have been received. He should have been rejected. And then the older brother begins to boast about all the works that he has done. All the works that he had done and that he shouldn't, that he deserved the inheritance. 
And so the only reason why the older brother was doing what he did was to receive a reward. He wasn't enjoying it. He wasn't enjoying the love that his father had for him. Everything he did was to receive a reward or to maintain it or to ensure it. And so when he saw that the reward was going, like he, the father was spending rewards on, and you know, I hate to say it, but just spending blessings on the, the, the younger son who messed up, the older son threw a fit. And he didn't even want to be a son of that father. But the way that the father reacted to that, he reacted the same way he reacted to the son that didn't, that, that, that spoiled the money previously. He reacted with grace and with mercy and with truth. And he simply said, why are you not happy? Your younger brother was lost and now is found. He was dead, but now is alive. All the father wants is his children to be his children and that they can enjoy his presence forever. We have a hard time seeing that with God, who Jesus, when he first spoke those words, pray as this, our heavenly father, I felt as you read that in that society, in that culture, God would never be a father the way they perceived him. They knew God as omnipotent and omnipresent and omnipotent, all-knowing, all-powerful, and everywhere, all-holy, all-righteous, unknowing, unattainable. But now they're calling this God whom they've served and has done miracles and wonders. They're calling him Father. And on top of that, who are we? Many of them were peasants, poor, were nobodies. But now they're calling God their Father. So the younger son had a hard time seeing their, his dad as his father. The older son saw the same difficulty. They had a hard time seeing a good father being their good father. This hits home to me. This hits home so hard to me. See, I read this book about being dad. And this is the thing that it talks about. I knew what I, I knew what could have been and what I lost and what I missed. And even if it wasn't that great, the moments in between were worth it. And as I, I lost my dad, I was, um, I was able to find a new dad, which is my heavenly father. And even though there were some hiccups along the way of my earthly father, there are some things that my dad did teach me and show me and mold me. And everything that we missed, my Heavenly Father filled in. 
And I remember my dad, he gave me a book. It was called The Point Man. And he said, kid, so Manny, I know I messed up. But this book right here, if I did everything in this book, I would have been a good man and a good father. So I want you to read it so you can know. And I read through that book. And I could have agreed with my dad that if we did everything, and if I do everything that book said, I will be a good father and a good dad. The most important thing it talks about is about having grace and mercy on your kids. And that's what God gives, is grace and mercy. Don't let God be distant because he doesn't want to be distant. He is your heavenly father, a good, good father, and he loves you. He loves you so much that he sent his son to die on a cross for you so that your sins could be wiped away and that in front of a holy and righteous God, you could be seen clean and pure and blameless before his eyes so that you can enjoy his presence for all eternity. As I for a season struggled to see God as my heavenly father after losing my dad, and I had a difficult time seeing my dad, even as my dad. I came to the knowledge that God loved me very much. And when I hit that ground as hard as I hit it, God's love was there for me and picked it up through the letters, through the messages, through the preachings, through the books. I made my bed in hell and God was there. You know, the world's missing good fathers. But they can have one. And it's through Christ. So I can tell you this. I've gotten up and I've walked strong because that is the God in whom I serve. And it sucks because like, not that sucks, but I have friends who've lost their fathers. I have brothers who've lost their dad. And I just pray and hope that they just rest in the Father's love, a heavenly Father's love, and get their strength from Him. Other than that, that's the end of the message.